Recently, I was invited to try out a new MMO server that will be hitting the market in the near future called Titanborn. And after checking out the trailer and their little combat teaser, I felt that like it looked intriguing enough to be worth trying out and sharing my honest opinions with you all. Currently, all that is available to play is a short little demo, so we don't really have any way of knowing the full expanse of the game's systems, we just get a little taste of what's in store. And it's an experience that has left me hungry for more, to put it simply. As I go in depth, keep in mind that just like other Minecraft MMO servers, this server is 100% vanilla and there are no mods at all. But when you first load into the demo, you're immediately greeted by Merlin. And right out of the gate, the server is impressive because all the dialogue is fully voiced. And the voice work itself is done very well. Uh, Windcraft has a community project that's been led by Kmaxi called the Voices of Win that basically does this. It adds voices to all the quest dialogue in the game, but this server has that built in right out of the gate, and I love that. One of the biggest issues with servers that try to compete in this niche is capturing and holding new players. And that, that's even something that Windcraft itself struggles with, and they constantly keep reworking and redoing the early game to help better do that. And if a player loads into the game and they're immediately met with a bunch of things that they need to read, that turns a lot of people off. You don't really want to sit there reading a whole bunch of things. You want to get into it. You want to play the game. You want to have fun. Typically, they'll just sit there and just spacebar through everything or shift through everything or whatever button it is to skip the dialogue. They just skip it all. And so they end up completely lost and ultimately end up disinterested in quitting the game because they don't know what's going on because they skipped everything and now they're expected to know. So on one hand, you give them a bunch of information that they need to play the game, understand the story, all that stuff, and they skip through it, they're lost. But if they read it, they're bored. And so you have to find some way to balance that and voicing all of it is the perfect way to do that. It's what bigger games have done for years and introducing it into a Minecraft server is a genius idea, and I am so glad that they did that. So, not even 60 seconds in, and the server is already showing a ton of promise. Once you're able to leave the ship, you get a look around and you can see the quality of the builds on the server up close. We do get a little teaser in the lobby and in the trailers, but you can't always take a trailer at face value, and you definitely can't take the lobby at face value, because for all we know, they hired a professional to build the lobby and then had a 10-year-old build the rest of the server. You, you, you gotta see it for yourself to see how it actually looks. And yeah, the, the world is phenomenal. Uh, it's very easy to see that there was a lot of time and effort put into every aspect of this world and the, that trailer and that um, lobby was not bait. We don't yet know what the entire world looks like, but from the little bits in the trailer and the bits that we see, it seems to be of similar quality to Windcraft in terms of the builds. As we continue on, we quickly encounter our first enemy, a Byleth, and we learn that Merlin can translate everything automatically so we can communicate with pretty much anything. Unfortunately, no matter what you say, the Byleth has convinced you're a Titan and he wants revenge. We might be a Titan, we might not be a Titan, we don't know, we have amnesia. So being able to communicate with him wasn't really helpful and we have to fight. So naturally, we have a gun, so we try to shoot him, and it explodes, which is hilarious. Just it, it feels like the game Borderlands 2 has a Dungeons & Dragons themed DLC, Tina Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, and there's a point in it where Tina has you go, you do your quest and everything, and then you get the reward, and it's this gun. And for some reason, she has them roll to pick up the gun, and they roll a nat 1, so the gun flies away or teleports away and they keep doing it and um it's a critical fail and the weapon is named the crit for it and this just reminds me of that you have, you have a critical fail where you go to shoot someone and the gun explodes in your hands rather than actually shooting and naturally merlin berates you for somehow managing to do that and that really sets the tone for your relationship with merlin going forward because he is snarky, and he always has something to say about everything that we do, and I absolutely love it. So, being down a weapon, we snag the Byleth sword, and combat can truly begin. As you progress through the demo, you'll find a bunch of gems that you can socket into the sword to give different abilities, some more impressive than others, and the demo features a checkpoint system where if you die, you just go back to the previous checkpoint. This allows for a very forgiving introduction to the combat that doesn't dumb it down or dial it back to make it too easy. 
the combat is exactly how they want it to be and if you're unable to complete it you just get to retry it like right where you last were basically you completed this section so now that section's completed you fail you got to redo that section Onward, we make our way to the surface and we are immediately arrested and then thrown into an arena to die for others entertainment but little did they know we are the main character so we handily defeat everything they threw at us and the demo comes to a close the ending is a little abrupt but i imagine in the actual full game it would continue on from that point rather than just stopping which is fine it doesn't need to continue on we don't need to know what else happens it is understandable um that people would be completely lost like i could try to explain the narrative at this point how things are going and what everything is but ultimately our character has amnesia and very little of anything makes sense to us merlin seems to know more about everything than we do but Merlin doesn't know enough to just fill us in on all of the information we could possibly want to know. So it seems Merlin's a little limited in what he's capable of doing for us. And we're going to need our memory back at some point. I don't know if we're ever going to get our memory back or if we're just going to go from this blank slate and build up from there. We'll have to wait and see. In addition to the standard uh, method of playing the demo, there is an optional speedrun version where there is a timer running so you can speed through it and complete it in as little time as possible. You can see the time on screen at all times so you will always know how long it's taking you. And in the little um, demo entry little lobby, there is a leaderboard you can view to see who has completed the speedrun version of the demo the fastest. And I plan to make a separate video on the speedrun portion a little bit later so keep your eyes open for that from what we have access to so far Titanborn is insanely fun the combat feels really good the characters are all full of life the animations are smooth and the server builds look really great there are some very minor bugs and there were even some more before I got to try it out but those exist in every game, especially when it's in early access beta, and they're doing their best to get rid of all of those bugs as quickly as they possibly can. Speaking in regards to the classes themselves, there are four to choose from. Red, purple, black, and yellow, and each one denotes a different color of mana used for casting. I don't know if these plan to have actual names later, or if you are just a red caster, a purple caster, a black caster, and a yellow caster, and that is just the class. Maybe they will have an actual name later, or maybe that is something they have now they just didn't want to spoil not sure um red is described as using the power of their reality to fuel their strength and the elements are at their disposal purple is referred to as the tamperer of the temporal fields and the summoner of space which is just a phenomenal description black shields themselves in cloaks of stealth and the undead teenage edge lords rejoice and yellow symbolizes justice and divinity these descriptions are a bit all over the place and I wish there was a bit more consistency. Yellow is spoken about like yellow casters are just a rumor, while red is described in detail, like it's something that's been researched intensely. And I don't like that variance there. I wish there was more uniform description language even, even if the descriptions themselves don't go much in detail. Additionally, none of these descriptions really do much for you when it comes to figuring out which class you want to play. I feel like a little more details on the abilities that caster type would use would be helpful because if you go in there thinking that the elements are at your disposal, so you're going to be shooting fireballs left and right, causing like eruptions of stone from the ground, just all these like massive methods of like destroying things with the elements, tornadoes and everything, and all you get is fireballs, that's, that's a little disappointing. I imagine later on uh, in the server's life, we will either be able to change what type of caster we are, or we'll be able to have multiple classes at once that we can switch between. That way we'll be able to play every different caster type. But new players won't be happy if they pick from a vague description, only to discover that the one they picked doesn't play the way that they hoped it would, and instead a different one does. If you go and you load in the game, you play for the first 30 minutes to finally like get a feel for how the character plays and everything and find that it doesn't play the way you wanted it to. And now you have to go trial and error the other three just to figure out which one fits you best. That's not fun. And that's just going to cause players to quit if they don't know what they're getting into and they're just told yellow. That's, that's basically the description yellow is. Justice and divinity, um, it, it's yellow. 
Yellow is yellow. That is the extent of the information that you have. Literally going into yellow, you know nothing about what yellow does. You know nothing about how it plays. You know nothing about what its abilities will do. You just know it is yellow. So if you like yellow and that's all you know, maybe you'll like yellow. But if you want to be shooting fireballs at things, yellow doesn't shoot any fireballs. Red shoots fireballs. And, and red's really the only one that even like gives a hint at how it actually works because it hints at elements and two of the abilities you use in the demo are elemental, they're fire. It needs a little work on that regard. Um, going a little more in depth on that, red specifically says the elements are at their disposal. But the only element being used in the demo is fire. Now, red being fire makes sense, don't get me wrong. But the description reads like it should be able to do more than that. It should be able to have water and wind and earth, you know, like the avatar. You know, if, if you're thinking you have the elements at your disposal, you're going to think you're going to be the avatar. That, I'm, I'm sorry. That's the way the world is. If someone goes into it thinking the elements are at their disposal, they're going into it expecting to be able to use water, earth, fire, and air. That's what they want. That's what they expect. And if you only give them fire, they're going to be disappointed. So you, you'd need to find a way to phrase it to where either they know what they're getting into, or if more is available, give us more. Because I, I, I don't want only fire if I'm told the elements are at my disposal. Earlier, I mentioned that one of the biggest issues for servers competing in this niche is capturing and holding new players. But the other biggest issue is maintaining a dedicated player base in the late game. These two things pair hand in hand. This is one side of the coin that kills your server, and this is the other side, and you have to get the coin to flip and land sideways in order to succeed. Because if you throw all of your eggs into getting you a fantastic new player experience, making it all easy and accessible and fun for new players, but there's nothing in the late game, those new players are all going to join, they're going to play, they're going to progress, they're going to finish, and they're going to quit. And that's the end. You'll get new players, and they'll see that all the veteran players are quitting. So less and less and less of them will make it all the way to the end. They'll quit earlier and earlier on average until nobody else is actually playing because why play a dead game? And they'll think that it's not good when nobody's playing it, even though the beginning is amazing. So the other side of that is, okay, focus on the late game content, the dedicated player base and neglect the beginning. So players will get an experience similar to Warframe where you load into the game and you were lost. You knew nothing. Nothing made any sense to you. You couldn't figure out what to do, where to go, how things worked. You just had a million things thrown in your face all at once and you were lost. And a lot of people quit. Warframe was the type of game to where you had to have a friend who already was a veteran player and they had to take you in and introduce you to things. They've spent a lot of time improving this, but it is still not great. There are still so many systems in that game, and the game is designed for the late game that the early game is still a bit of a mess. And so you, you don't want your game to be like that because you don't want the new players to quit because they don't know what they're doing and there's no way for them to figure it out. And you don't want the other players to quit because there's nothing left to do. So you need to find a good balance. Windcraft has been working a lot on finding a good balance to where every, it seems every other update is flipping back and forth. You'll have one update where they revamp a bunch of early game stuff and low level things. And then you get another update where they add more stuff in the late game. And if they don't focus on both, if you focus on one, you will lose the other side of the community. You focus too hard on the early game, all the veteran players are going to get bored and they're going to leave. You focus too hard on the late game, you're not going to be able to capture as many new players and other servers are going to draw them away. And I think the Titanborn developers are very aware that both of these are a problem and both need to be addressed because they seem to be building this server with late game players in mind to a degree that even Windcraft isn't doing. So if you look at the demo, taking your time, going through the demo, relax, maybe failing combat a couple times, you've got like 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes if you're really slow of content total. That's that's that is the extent of the demo. It's 20, maybe 30 minutes. That's it. But the Titanborn team have found a way 
to give the dedicated players something to do that requires knowledge, skill, practice, and even a bit of luck. Having the demo set up with a speedrun function with an in-game leaderboard does a lot to drive competition amongst the more skilled players, especially if you introduce systems like that with rewards for those players. A leaderboard slot alone is enough reason to compete, but if you can get a leaderboard slot and a little prize, maybe every week, like you get a little title in chat or something, just because you were rank one on some leaderboard, people will go for that so that every week that they can have that title. Likewise, if you get some in-game currency for getting on the leaderboard, people are going to compete to get on that leaderboard to get that currency. So I feel that if systems like this exist within other aspects of the server, even if they're just taking the same exact system, that same speed run system, and just throwing it on dungeons that they introduce, that's going to give people a reason to redo those dungeons, and the dedicated players are going to have some reason to keep playing even if they run out of new content and more difficult challenges to go for like even if you get all the best gear you've min max you've gotten all the best stuff at the best possible build you can possibly get for every different thing you can possibly have do you have the best time on this dungeon though no go get it then do you have the best time on this quest if you can replay quests i don't know if you'll be able to you, do you have the best time on this no go get it like fight for that you, giving people something to go for speedrunning is a very very deep rooted and integral part of gaming as a whole it has been something people have strived for for decades people have been speedrunning games and making it an integral part of the server can really do a lot to build a lot of community because people enjoy seeing skilled players accomplish things and the ultimate testament to skill is doing something so fast that people can't even comprehend how you've done that and so having that as a system in the demo speaks volumes for what this server might have in store for us and th this isn't even speaking of the combat in the server the combat is so fun like we only got a taste of it we fought a few byleths we fought some zombies and we fought one little boss and that's it that's all we got but the combat was so fun the abilities are so smooth and the animations look so cool and it's just so much fun and each of the different um colors that you can play as each of the different classes they all feel different because of the way that their abilities work. And again, we don't know if that's all there is. I imagine there's more. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if there's dozens of different ability gems for each of them with hundreds of different weapons that you could put them on. And that gives so much variety and potential that this server could leverage, make this boss. He's got this much health. He does this much damage. He fights in this way. There you go go and then player comes in there wearing no armor using the starting weapon that you get the little freaking byleth sword imagine if they walk in there with a the byleth sword no armor and they've only got a couple specific abilities that they are using that combo in a very particular way and they can beat the hardest boss in the game without taking any damage someone's gonna do something like that you can guarantee it so if you know that players are able to do that and you see what abilities are giving them the ability to do that make your boss immune to certain abilities make your boss resistant to certain abilities make your boss fight in a specific way to where certain abilities don't apply to them but others will it gives people a reason to change things around like say this ability here it holds the enemy in place and does damage them but then let's say this boss if he's held in place, he becomes immune to damage. So you need to not hold him in place. So while with these other bosses, you'd hold them in place and then just cheese the boss. You just hit them, regen your mana, and hold them in place again. And hit them, regen your mana, hold your hold them in place again. You just keep doing that. And you kill them without ever getting hit because they're stuck in place. But then this boss, if he's held in place, 
he's immune to being hit. He has to be moving around to be able to take damage. You can't use that ability. You have to use something else. So it gives people a reason to think about how they approach each combat scenario. If you make certain enemies fight in certain ways that go against what the community is seeing as the min-max, the min-max becomes specialized to the specific encounter, and it gives people a lot of enjoyment out of figuring out what works well. I'm mostly rambling here. Um, this is only loosely scripted. I didn't really like write out a proper script for this. I wrote down some talking points and some things I wanted to mention, but for the most part, I've just been rambling on about my thoughts. And I, I really, really think that there's a lot of potential here. Like even just in the demo with the combat, if you stood still, you died. Like that was that was that. If you stood still, you died. You could not kill the Byleths standing still. They would just kill you. And at the very, very, very beginning, they did it in two hits. When you made it toward the end, it was like three or four hits. You had a little bit more health, but they'd still kill you very easily. So you had to keep moving around. And if you have to keep moving constantly in every encounter and standing still would get you punished heavily and you just get destroyed for standing still, it gives you a reason to keep moving. And it gives people a reason to focus on that movement aspect of the combat. That dodge roll becomes that much more valuable if standing still punishes you. And sure, standing still will punish you when you're fighting hordes of enemies, but if you're fighting a boss and you use an ability that holds him in place, you're going to want to stand still. You're going you're gonna to stand there next to the boss and just hit the boss. But if you're still getting hit by things because you're standing still, you're instead going to run circles around the boss while you're hitting it. And that, that changes the dynamic of the fight, and it causes players to focus more on being cautious and careful with how they approach every encounter in the game, which is a good thing. If players walk into combat and they're just thinking, all right, I'm going to spam three over and over again. Okay, you spammed three, the boss is dead. Congratulations. But if they go into it thinking, okay, I got to make sure I'm constantly moving. This guy looks like he's going to be a little fast, so maybe I don't use three because three is a little hard to hit on fast enemies. Maybe I want to use four instead. I'm just using generic ability numbers because I don't know the names of the abilities that you'll be using in any encounters. So if, if you have to use specific things in specific scenarios, and you have to think about how things are going to be and how you're going to move. You look, have to look at the arena and there's hazards that you could run into that you have to actively avoid that adds another layer to the combat and things like that. They make it engaging and fun. And the combat itself is engaging and fun. And it has so much room to utilize things like that. That I think there is so much potential. That there is genuinely a possibility that the combat could be all on its own enough to keep endgame players hooked. Just adding a like built-in PvP system where things are balanced automatically so that your damage is equalized in such a way to where it becomes a skill-based fight could genuinely lead to a lot of like in-game tournaments and competitions even without the server itself running them. I'm not even a huge fan of PvP, but I recognize that one of the biggest issues with PvP is how horribly unbalanced it is a lot of the time. Many times you'll run into a PvP scenario and you're doing 50 damage and they're doing 500 damage and you've got the same amount of health. You lose. Like that's just how it's going to be. You, you, you're just going to lose. You've got a thousand health apiece, they kill you in two hits. It takes you 20 to kill them. Doesn't matter how good you are, if they only need two hits to kill you, you're probably going to lose. But if your damage was then equalized, now you would actually be testing your skill and your familiarity with the combat and how things are and your um, ability to react quickly. The vanilla combat system is like that where everybody can only do so much damage. Everybody only has so much health, so much method of regeneration and your skill is based on how quick you can react, how quickly you can do certain things, how 
well you can maneuver around and avoid certain things. And in the olden days, how quickly you could click, uh, which I hated. But it still required a lot of practice and experience to be able to do something like that. So even in the pre 1.9 spam clicking era, it still required a degree of skill that quite frankly doesn't exist in a scenario where you just kill things the exact same way every time. Because if you go in, you click three, you click three again, you click three again, and it dies, that's not fun. But if you go in and you click three and you find that it didn't work, now you're running away, now you're panicking a little bit because you didn't expect that not to work, and now you're trying to figure out what to do, how to best utilize your other abilities. And if you die, maybe you respec or get a different weapon that's kitted out with different abilities, that way you can use something else. However the system exists, if there is enough variety in the combat, which this server seems structured to support, if there's enough variety, you can really lean into that and you can really make it to where certain things just don't work on certain bosses and you could go even a step further you can make it to where certain things actively punish you for using them against bosses like an ability that holds things in place that'll work on this boss this other boss though mm -mm. no you you use that ability on him he holds you in place so now neither of you can move but he can still hit you. So do you want to both be sitting there and getting hit? Or do you want to be moving and avoiding damage? What do you want to do? I'm, I'm just rambling at this point. I should probably wrap it up. So this server, it, it has fantastic combat with a lot of potential. It has a very engaging narrative. A lot of people, from what I've heard, were very confused and lost on the introductory narrative, which is kind of the point. You have amnesia. You don't know what's going on. So why would you know what's going on? You're told things, you don't know what those things are. You have amnesia, you don't know what those things are. Why would it matter? You'll figure it out later, and it makes sense to. And I love that. The world is fantastic, it's beautiful, I can't wait to see more of it. And this server genuinely seems designed to be reasonably accessible to new players, whilst also having systems in place to keep veterans hooked for years to come. And I'm very excited. Will this server dethrone Wincraft? Probably not. Let's be honest. Wincraft is a behemoth that has been around forever. Even Hypixel Skyblock, which has far more players, couldn't dethrone Wincraft as the Minecraft MMO. People don't see Skyblock as a Minecraft MMO. They just see it as a Minecraft server. But they don't see it as a Minecraft MMO. The way that they see Wincraft as a Minecraft MMO. And this won't be able to take that spot from Wincraft either. Wincraft will still be the Minecraft MMO. But I think this server might have what it takes to stand alongside Wincraft. And instead of there being the Minecraft MMO, servers like Titanborn, Skyblock Isles, Spellforged, and a few others, they could all collectively be the Minecraft MMOs and they just all exist in the same sphere with thousands of players on each of them. I think they all have potential for that. And I'm really excited to see how things develop for Titanborn. The, the server is planned to go into open beta later this year, and I, I'm definitely going to be playing it. I really, really hope you will join it as well. Uh, you can try the demo for yourself. Uh, it costs, I think, $15 to get access to the demo. You don't need to try the demo. You could just watch a couple other YouTubers playing the demo. I'll link a couple of them in the description down below for anybody who hasn't seen. And I think that's where I'm going to end this. So I thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you all later. You really have to become better at communication. Because right now, it keeps getting us into situations like these. A cell with a weird guy in the other corner.